All right, welcome back, everybody, for my Wednesday watch list. This is my weekly look ahead to the new comic books coming out this week. This week's episode is for February 14th, uh, New Comic Book Day Wednesday. And these are the books that are either um, you know pre-selling for a little bit of a premium already, some uh, some new number ones that are coming out, some incentives that are worth keeping your eye on, some cool covers that I think are just worth uh, checking out for yourselves, uh, things on my reading list, etc. Just my quick little rundown of all the new books coming out for this week. Hopefully you're enjoying this series as well as everything else here on the channel. Please let me know what you think down in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, hit the alert button so you don't miss anything. Keep telling your friends so we can keep growing the channel. And uh, I'm sitting down to do this just before the Super Bowl starts. So uh, members are probably going to get this a little early. Uh, they'll get it probably during the Super Bowl. And then everybody else will have to wait until Monday to check that out. Just one of the few perks of uh, joining up as a member of the channel. So with that said, if you want to see this week's books, all you got to do is hang on for a few seconds. And I will be right back. All righty. Well, let's start it off as we usually do with this week's buzz books. So these are the books that got a little bit of buzz around them, whether it just be from what I'm hearing going on on the, uh, you know, the chats and the interwebs and people talking or just things that I'm personally looking forward to. And I think that got a little bit of extra heat on them. Uh, and the first one is uh, this cover. Now, you're probably going to ask yourself, why is there a Star Wars High Republic Adventures cover here? This is issue three of Star Wars <laughs> High Republic Adventures. And the reason it's here is because we had the privilege of having the artist of this book on for an interview just a few weeks ago. So if you didn't check out that... Uh, that interview on the Tales from the Dark Side show uh, just a few weeks back. The link will be down below. But uh, Ella stopped by, was hanging out with the boys, talking about her upcoming covers, and that Star Wars uh, High Republic is her first. Uh, first for a major publisher, and uh, it is pretty cool. She also has a, a very interesting uh, one in ten incentive coming out pretty soon, too. But with that all said, that's why I put that in there, because uh, you know she came by, hung out, talking about her book and uh, i'm personally looking forward to it because i do like her style if you haven't seen her instagram again go check out the show and uh give her a look and with that said you can also get the other cover which ain't that bad but i'm definitely getting that big cover there uh but with that let's move on to the next book which is moon knight so vengeance of moon knight number two we are dealing with could be a new moon knight is it the old moon knight we don't really know i don't think 100% yet. We know that the Midnight Mission is still running, and they are running at odds against this new Moon Knight, so we'll see how this all shakes out uh, as it was built up to with that uh, Jed McKay run over that first, you know, those 30 issues before we're getting to here, and now we're here. See how this is going to play out. So even on this cover, you can see the new Moon Knight facing off with Hunter's Moon, and again, uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, multiple covers on this thing, too. This is issue two. Uh, not a ton. They've actually toned it back from what issue one had. But we do have, you know, a B cover and a 1 in 25 and a Virgin 1 in 100, uh, if you are so inclined. This week, for some reason, there are quite a few sideways covers. I don't know why, but this is one of a handful that you'll see as we roll on through the show. But uh, 1 in 25, I think, is just doing ratio or less, so nothing really to pay attention to there. The 1 in 100... The same token, we only had one pre-sale that I could track down, and it was for a, a decent 170. So I'm not gonna ignore it, but it was back at the end of January. So it was almost a month ago, three weeks ago. So I don't know how relevant that sale is today, but there are none on the market for me to judge just yet. Maybe some will pop up between now and Wednesday, but for now, it's just one to keep an eye on because I don't know what the uh how many shops are still ordering 100 copies of uh Vengeance the Moon Knight still, you know. We'll see. We'll see as the week goes on. Up next, I think people are really enjoying this series, as am I. The Wolverine has uh, kicked it up. We got the Sabretooth War continuing. Uh, it's exciting. It's always exciting when these two you know, go head-to-head, -head, and uh, this is a long little event that they're running through, and uh, it's been solid so far. Issue 43 of Wolverine is another book that has a few covers for us to deal with. Uh, we've got the A cover here. There is a uh, B cover that's a Sabretooth through the ages, so the many different looks of Sabretooth. This one looks like he's in an 80s, you know, American Gladiator uh, competition of some kind. I don't know. And then we do have an X-Men 97 kind of throwback homage uh, uh, variant as well. Included uh, with these, there is a 1 in 25 and a Virgin, of course, because it's Marvel. They have to do a Virgin version of that 
you know, for the one in 100. It's just, it seems like it's, it, it's, they have to now. It's almost uh, obligatory at this point. That said, I kind of like the one in 25. Uh, I don't know, just something with the trade dress and how Wolverine's there. The Sabretooth War banner is kind of throwing it off a little bit. I think if it was more just stark, like all white, I think it would look a little bit cooler. I mean, the blood's not too bad of a framing you know, bit there, but I don't know. I think it would just look better if it was a little less, uh, a little less on this one, just based on how the image is laid out. But with that said, uh, neither are really doing much. In fact, I saw that one to 100 listed for under 40 bucks. There was one you could buy it now, I think for like $38. I don't remember what the shipping was. Shipping might've been expensive too, but still it's just out there. If you're curious, not selling for a premium, it's something that you can go and get a hold of. Now, with that said, uh, the next series, I, debated whether to keep it here in the buzz section or not i don't know if i'm being biased because i really enjoy the transformers and gi joe and i'm really digging what they're doing in the energon universe here with what's you know with skybound but uh issue five we've got uh you know nice little tease there this was part of the teaser cover on the prior issue seeing megatron you know megatron coming basically uh and here's just another a, a little bit extra here so Megatron's arm cannon there with Optimus in the reflections. Not bad for a cover A. Looking forward to reading this. Definitely will be at the top of the reading pile. But on top of that, B cover's all right. The one in 10 is really cool. I like that sound wave. Uh, the one in 25, I'm not a fan of. It's just kind of like boring. Uh, like I'm not the biggest cliff jumper fan, but uh, I guess if you are, this might be the cover for you. And then I didn't even know that there was a spoiler on the one in 50, because I feel like the image has been out there for a while already, but the one in 50 on this transformers issue five technically is a spoiler. And if you want to be spoiled, here it is. Optimus slapping on Megatron's arm and his arm cannon, uh, to do battle of some sort. Pretty cool. I like it. That said, how's it doing? The little above. We're looking at about $70 on a couple of uh, pre-sales back in, you know, end of January. Uh, so like three weeks ago. And then the current asking prices are anywhere from like 70 to 75. So uh, it is seeking a little bit of a premium. That's how these spoiler covers have been lately. Uh, many have gotten a little bit of extra heat as the week has gone on, but I feel like this is already starting off pretty high. So I don't know if it'll keep on with that traction or not. Uh, plus, the, the spoilers are gonna get wearing kind of thin. It's like, what else can you spoil? I mean, this is just a story beat uh, that they're basically spoiling here. It's not like a huge introduction or return of a character. It's just something that's going to happen in the book. But with that said, we'll see how this one does as well. I like it. I don't think I ordered this one because I can't order all of them. It's just too expensive. I mean, one of 50s, can't do it every week or even every month. It's It's got to be a special occasion for me to want to go and buy some of these higher ratio incentives. But I do like looking. And I do like keeping an eye on it. Plus, I got to do it anyway for the hot 10. So I got to be tracking this stuff anyway. So I'm getting the best information for all of you. Now, with that said, let's move on to my reading list. And while basically all of those buzz books will be at the top of my reading pile, uh, in addition to those, I'm also going to be taking a look at these next few books. Starting off with Batman, which apparently I guess is going weekly or bi-weekly, I don't know, I feel like it was just last week we were talking about Batman 142, and here we are again with 143, uh, Joker Year One Part Two. Uh, I think maybe Matt told me that this was going to be weekly, and I could do my best to keep up with it, but I like the first part so far, I'm going to try to keep up with uh, Part Two here. Covers, uh, plenty, but no incentives, which is still another oddity i said that the last time out there was no incentives but here we go there's a area cover we've got uh, b's and c's that are pretty solid uh really like the art on some of these uh, and then d's and e i don't know we run through the letters of the alphabet here to get all these different covers but plenty of options and they're all basically cover price uh i really actually don't care for this uh that joker cover with the batman mask i mean i get it it does have a creepy look to it but it's i don't know just something a little off about it. It's just not really in proportion. It's just kind of more style than substance, I guess. I don't know. Just not for me. That one's not my favorite. But, yeah, could be uh, for somebody else's. So go for it. Get whichever one you like. Because, like I said, they're all uh, basically cover price. So pick the one you like. Uh, I've got to go and check out because I haven't checked out this series yet. So I'm putting this on the reading pile because i got to get the last issue as well because I was recommended to check it out. And that is Action Comics 1062. So 1061, I think, was the start of this. 
uh, Bizarro run with uh, Jason Aaron doing action comics. Like I said, I didn't really give it much of a look when it first came out. Just wasn't that excited for a Superman book, but I've been told to check it out. So I'm putting those aside to read both this week, you know, to kind of catch up and see what's going on in uh, the world of Bizarro. So Bizarro, I always like the character, so I'm kind of intrigued a little bit. So we'll see what happens here with uh, Action Comics 1062. There are a few covers here. You got the cover A, and then there's Bs and Cs. Uh, some options there for you. I kind of like that C cover a little bit with the, uh, you know, nice little Bizarro. Then there's a couple of incentives, too, if you're into that. Uh, I mean, they're not terrible. They're all right, I guess, but uh, not not really doing much. So uh, don't have to worry about uh, missing out. You should be able to obtain these if you're willing to pay, again, ratio or less, because that's kind of where they're at. Uh, with that, X-Men, I'm still an X-Men fan. I'm going to try to keep up and keep going and keep reading and rolling with whatever they're doing, even when it's not the greatest. It's just one of those things you do as a collector, right? X-Men and Spidey have uh worn me down over the decades but still hanging in month after month week after week at times uh when they speed up that uh, publishing schedule but here we go fall of the house of x part two so it's still falling uh they're still wrapping this up there'll be a few more issues before i guess it's done and then we get the new reboot and new stuff coming but pretty cool cover a here uh there's a couple other nice covers on the b and the c uh, and then they've taken a couple of these covers and made them incentives by making them virgin covers. So keep an eye out for those as well. There's a 1 in 25, a 1 in 50, and a 1 in 100 if you are so inclined. Again, not really doing too much on the aftermarket yet. And the Xbox really haven't caught unless there's a, you know, unless it's like we're talking a sexy art germ or Art Adams or some popular artist doing a uh, nice looking lady on the cover. These X variants haven't really been hitting of late on their own, but if you are a collector, you can probably get these for under ratio. So there you go. Included in this uh, list of covers for Fall of the House of X, there is another one. So I separated it out because it is a connecting cover. And uh, that is this one right here with Apocalypse on the front. Yeah, not bad. It's a you know connecting cover that's going to connect with the book that comes out next week, which is the uh, rise of the powers of X. So you put these two together, much like issues ones for both series. There was a connecting cover set. This is another set. So they did this with the original House and Powers of X, where there was a connecting cover set on running throughout the entire six issues series. So it looks like they're doing it again. So connecting covers running through both of these uh, and they're only a week apart. So if you like it, you got to get the one next week too. With that, we have a very large pile of new number one books this week. There's a lot. There's a lot. Some I'm interested in, some maybe not so much, but it's beyond what I am personally looking forward to. I'm just also giving you guys information because I know some of you like some of this stuff maybe more than I do. So I don't want to neglect you. So with that, we'll start off with a book that is in that vein. I was kind of intrigued with Blue Book at the start, but I'm not an alien guy, so kind of bored. A uh, buddy of mine at work, he's like, oh, you got to read it, you got to read it. It's a, all that stuff. It's just not for me. I'm not an Area 51 guy. I just really don't care all that much. So this one's not so much for me, but we're getting another volume, 1947, of Project Blue Book, starting up at Dark Horse. Uh, not sure if... Uh, Tinny and Substack is still doing these like digitally early or not, but I know they did initially as part of his uh, Tiny Onion uh, Club and the whole Substack thing. But here we go. Another series coming out of Dark Horse. Uh, a lot of a lot of covers. B's and C's, a foil version of that cover A as well. Uh, and then there's another cover price cover as well as a 1 in 25 and a, oh, a 1 in 10 and a 1 in 25. So, uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Just a couple of covers and then the one at 10. Oh, and then there is a one in 25 here, which is kind of cool, kind of cool, kind of creepy. So if you're interested, there are incentives, which is not something Dark Horse does a lot. So uh, yeah, just something to keep an eye on. But they are doing it for the Project Blue Book uh, of late. Continuing on, Dark Horse is also going to give us, if you find this, I'm already dead. Not exactly sure what this series is, but I'm kind of intrigued, and I think it's an oversized, uh, like a almost mag size, but it's a comic. So just another thing to keep an eye on because the price is going to be a little bit more. 
two covers on this one. There's an A cover as well as a B cover. I mean, get the one that you like. Uh, no incentives here that uh, you need to worry about. So just get the one that you like. DC is coming out of left field, at least to me. Again, I can't read all the books, so I don't know what's going on with all the titles. So I'm not keeping up with like Super Sons, but what the heck is this? Sinister Sons. So the son of General Zod and the son of Sinestro are teaming up. Bad, mad, and angry at dad. This almost went in the WTF section, but I held back because it would have been all by itself there. I don't know. Plus, it could be good. I just have no idea what this is or where this came from. But here we go. Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Multiple covers here, too. Uh, we've got Bs and Cs, and I believe there's an acetate cover as well that is doing the whole, uh, it's like a Muppet thing where they're stacked and sit on top of each other's shoulders and they're in the trench coat. And I don't know why they did it, but there you go. There's an acetate cover that reveals the two of them uh, underneath the one trench coat to look like adults, I guess. Again, it was like a Muppet baby thing. I don't know. That said, one in 25 and a one in 50 on this book as well. Um, not doing any, anything beyond uh, ratio, so you can get these ratio or less if you're interested, but uh, there are incentives, as you can see here. Uh, that 1 in 50 looks like Brian Lee O'Malley, but I think it's a La Fuente, so I don't know. Plus, that's a really big ring on uh, Kid Sinestro's hand. I don't know if he's supposed to be that little, but that ring looks really oversized for him. I don't know, but again, I'm not reading, so maybe there's a reason uh, that I'm missing. Creep show. We're also getting a creep show. I don't know if this is a yeah, it's a number one special, so I think it's a one shot. This Joe Hill's Wolverton station. Pretty creepy covers here. If you're into this, looks like a werewolf story of some kind, as we have an A cover, uh, B cover, as well as a one in ten incentive that is uh pretty creepy and pretty cool. I don't know, something about the color choice here. I think that green kind of helps. The greens and blues, a little offsetting and makes that pink blood and gore and grime just kind of come like right at you this is actually doing a little bit more than the one in ten ratio so uh something to keep an eye on early pre-sales in the 25 dollar kind of range and that's 25 to 30 seems to be the asking price uh for this one shot so again 4.99 book something to keep an eye on something to keep an eye on i remember the zero issue of this dutch series coming out a little while ago and i think we put it in here uh but apparently we were getting issue one of uh, this 90s image kind of throwback book, Dutch. I, I don't know much about it, but it's coming. And along with a 1 in 10 and a 1 in 25 incentive. Yeah, it definitely has a 90s kind of vibe when you look at some of these covers. But uh, I don't know, the 1 in 10 looks kind of cool. It looks almost like a, like a mech, like a Gundam kind of thing going on there. But then you look at the 1 in 25 and I'm going... Did Liefeld draw this? Oh, wait, he retired. So, I don't know. But it's coming out if you're interested. As is the cabinet out of Image. Yeah, Image is always good to introduce new minis. And since they're minis, it's not a long-term investment. If you want to check out a new book, get it. It might be four to six issues. And you get a nice little self-contained sort of story most times. The cabinet could be one of those. Uh, there is an issue one uh, A cover. There is a B cover that is also used for the one in 10 and one in 25 incentives. Uh, so again, four covers, but it's really only two. But there it is. I kind of like this one, though. Kind of like this, uh, the B cover. Don't know if I need the virgin or the black and white version of it. Just the regular old B cover will probably do just to check it out and see what this uh, story is all about. Same with the Infernals, which... This is something to do with, like, Satan's son or something. So there's a lot of really creepy uh, covers to go along here. Again, out of image, A cover. There is a B cover and then a few incentives on this one as well. This looks like a Godfather vibe, which is kind of cool. Uh, but again, if you're interested, some creepy stuff here. I really like that. One in 10 is not too bad. And there's a one in 15 and a one in 25. So... Again, Devil's Son or something or other has to do something. I don't know. Sorry, I don't have a lot of details on what it's about. It's just uh, one of those things. I did read it. I did read the synopsis, but I read it a few hours ago. And now my brain's just kind of moving on. Again, thinking about the Super Bowl is going to start in a little bit. So, um, 
yeah, mine is a little bit elsewhere. So sorry for being a little bit distracted today. With that, we do still have a couple of more. You thought that was a lot. We're still not done. We have Boom giving us The Displaced. Another new series here. Giving us multiple covers. We got an A cover. Uh, B, and then a B virgin. And then there's a 1 in 10 uh, virgin for that cover A. And then there's also a very interesting looking 1 in 25. Uh, I do kind of like that with the pieces kind of missing. Almost like a little negative space thing kind of going. Uh, I don't know. Kind of like it. Maybe not negative space, but you know what I'm saying. This is like missing pieces, so it's just like uh, carrying through. Anyway, one more. I think we have one more. Uh, Scout is giving us another number one. So far, I don't know if this one's been optioned yet, but you know, Scout, everything gets optioned. So keep an eye out for this one, too. Uh, Divine, uh, Power Made Me. I don't know. Something with a creepy owl on the front. There's an A cover, and there is an interesting B cover here as well. Kind of like this. It's like a map and almost like a Japanese tattoo art or something. I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Wait, we aren't done. We're just done with the number ones for uh, DC and the indie stuff. I forgot about Marvel. Yeah, Marvel's got us too. So 22 minutes in, we're still on new number ones. Here we go. Marvel is for some reason bringing back Night Thrasher. Because everybody's been asking for him. Whatever. Night Thrasher's coming back uh, with a new number one. There you go. Multiple covers here as well. My favorite is probably the uh, Bagley over there on the left. Uh, there's the Masterpiece card there in the middle. Again, one of those sideways covers. And there's a Tradmore that's kind of odd looking because, well, you know, that's what Tradmore kind of does. He does a little off, off the norm, off the beaten path kind of art. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Not sure if I'm loving this one per se, but eh. Could be worse. That said, there's incentives on this as well. There is a virgin version of that Hildebrandt, and there's also a 1 in 25. Uh, that looks just like a Daredevil cover. I don't know. So, Daredevil knockoff. There we go. Night Thrasher. Yep. Uh, with that said, there aren't many of the 1 in 50 that have sold. In fact, there are none. And there aren't many listed, as there's only one, and they're looking for a solid 150. Granted, it hasn't sold, so you can ask whatever you want. That doesn't mean it's worth $150. I just thought it was interesting that there is one listed, and it is asking $150, and that there are no other books up for its competition, nor have any sold yet. So, more something to keep an eye on. Uh, I don't know. The, the Hildebrandt, one in, you know, the 1 in 50s, 1 in 100s even, the, whatever they've done for the virgin versions of the Masterpiece cards, they really haven't hit on the market for the last couple of months, even though they've been doing it a while. So, I don't know how this one's going to do, but again, Something to keep an eye on. Something worth watching. Just thought it was interesting, uh, that asking price when I was looking. So it stood out, so I figured I'd throw it in there. With that, we are also getting a number one on Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. So brother and sister tag team, I guess. I don't know. Here we go. New series starting up. I think it's just a mini, so it's probably just going to do a mini, a mini, and then maybe we'll get a new Scarlet Witch run again. Who knows? Cover A. There is a pretty cool foil cover here as well. If you're interested in buying the foil covers, it'll cost you a little bit more. Um, there are There's a Scotty Young number one here. Surprise, Scotty didn't do a Night Thrasher, but he, he does have a Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. There is a Rose Besh, which actually isn't half bad, kind of like that too. And then there is one of those lazy insignia logo covers, whatever you want to call them. I just don't care. If you're interested and you like it, go for it. It's just me. I just don't care. That's all. I, I would rather get one of these the cooler art if I'm going to buy a book. But for whatever reason, Marvel has really settled in on those insignia covers and made those high ratio incentives by making them virgin, along with another cover that'll make a virgin. So we have a 1 in 25. The Besh is a solid 1 in 50 virgin cover. And then the 1 in 100, the highest ratio is the insignia. All right. So for these, we'll start with the 1 in 25 is not doing much. Ratio or less. One in 50. Well, there's been one pre-sale that I noticed way back in December, but it still was about 60 bucks, so it's above ratio. And then the asking price, again, asking price right now, 60 to 90. We'll see where this one kind of settles in as the week goes on, see if anybody buys or if they leave it. Price goes up, price goes down. Who knows? But that's where the market is on this one leading into the week. This is ahead. These are pre-sales. This is the head of the game. We'll see what happens once it hits shelves, but that's where the one in 50 rose besh is. And then the insignia, 
no sales, one listed, and they're looking for 200 bucks. Not my 200 bucks. Because again, I just don't care for these things. I don't know. It's just okay. Scarlet Witch logo. Looks like a Magneto M. Whatever. I don't know. It's not for me. I, I could spend that 200 bucks on a whole lot of other books. With that said, we're getting a whole lot of other variants and covers that we skipped. We skipped them in the other segments. They might have rolled out because some of these do tie to some of the books we've already talked, talked about. But you know how Marvel and DC have been doing these days. We give you a lot of weird different theme covers. So I like covering the theme covers because they're usually interesting. I can make a short out of them if they're good enough. But Marvel, 97 variants, kind of getting ready, getting us hyped for X-Men 97. These are just all of Marvel. We're getting a bunch of these uh, variants, starting off with Thunderbolts. Thunderbolts 3, this one is the one that has Bucky fighting the Kaiju, American Kaiju on the cover. I think we talked about it last week on the tax show. But this is the 97 variant throwback. Uh, Blades also got a 97 variant. A little bit of a throwback here. I guess they're going for the Wesley Snipes box look with his hair. Uh, also, I guess the shirtless, shirtless blade. Uh, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver also getting a 97 variant. This is what they wore back then. Okay. Other than that, the art looks you know, more today. So that one doesn't feel like a throwback where some of the others do feel more throwback. Here's a Moon Knight 97. Okay. And well, he came from the nineties and we've got a Night Thrasher as well. Riding his skateboard down the streets. All righty. It is February, <laughs> and we do have another set of variant covers for you. It's February, and we do have Black History Month variants. Both Marvel and DC are giving us different sets of covers. Uh, Marvel's even doing a separate Star Wars-like bit as well. We've already just talked about Night Thrasher. We talked about Night Thrasher again. Well, Night Thrasher, he's got a Black History Month variant as well on his new number one. Again, with a skateboard. Uh, we're getting a Miles this week. I think this is issue 16. So, you know, Miles, and I think it's his sister uh, back there in the back. But I'm not sure. I haven't been keeping up with Miles. I know. Again, I can't read everything. Uh, but there's Miles getting a Black History Month variant as well. As Black Panther is giving us one, too. And I think this is Shuri on the cover of this one. I uh, don't really like the look. It's got like a weird... You're trying to do the rock? I don't know. I don't know. I don't love this one. Vader, as I mentioned, Star Wars is doing their own thing, also celebrating Black History Month uh, with, I think they only do like five or six covers, but here we go, another uh, another Star Wars. These ones are also all done by Ken Lashley, so these are pretty cool and pretty consistent. And then DC, as I mentioned, is doing, and they've done their this also the last few years, so they're doing their versions of their heroes for Black History Month, and we're getting Speed Force number four, giving us uh, the other Wally West and we're getting Steel's daughter on action. Yeah, pretty cool. And then I think this is on uh, the outside. Oh, here we go. The Outsiders is giving us, uh, I think it's Batwing, right? I think it's Batwing. It's a, uh, what's his name, son? Fox. Lucius Fox's kid. Uh, but I don't know. If you're interested, there's a bunch of variants for you. Oh, sorry. We are not done. I didn't put these in their own category last week. I put them in the cheesecake section. But we're going to put them... In their own category this time because while i felt comfortable doing one of these in the cheesecake section the other one wasn't exactly the same so uh here we go dc sweater weather yes we could have put this in the cheesecake section because we do have a few of the ladies there uh you know in this pool doing green lantern things sweater weather okay this is dc's response i guess to the ski chalet the couple of covers that had the characters in like bikinis and like hot tubs and stuff in the Alpines. I don't know. I don't know the point of this. But DC decided to do this too. And uh, call these sweater weather covers. And as I said. Well this one. I just would have slid it into the cheesecake section. Uh, this next one feels more of a beefcake cover. So I couldn't really put it in the cheesecake section. Because it's more Bruce than it is Selena. So if you like Bruce. You know. Throwing it out there. Go for it. I don't know. I just don't get why they're doing these right now. Like, whatever. They're doing it. With that said, we are going to actually go to the Cheesecake Covers now following that segment because it seems like a good segue. 
So with the cheesecake covers for this week, we are getting plenty. Starting off with Zenoscope. Yep, can't go a week without, well, sometimes we go a week without them, but when we do get them, we usually get multiples. Here we go. Grim Fairy Tales 24 Valentine's Day Lingerie Pinup Special. So this is not an actual comic. It's just a pinup book. So just covers and images, I guess. So feel free to go and get whichever one you like if you are so inclined in buying these books. Uh, there's, again, four covers. I don't know what we're going to call them, A, B, C, and D, but they're different covers. Uh, different options for you there if you're interested. Pretty cool. Not bad. Uh, then we are also getting a... Uh, Missed Dragon's Guard number one. I guess we're starting a new series. Everything seems to be in issue one, so I don't really get it half the time how everything's in issue one. Are they all specials? Are they all one shots? I don't know. I don't read Cenoscope, so I don't really get it. But here we go. See, there's a dragon, at least in this one, because we got her with a dragon. And then uh, there's a Pierre Luigi. No, I, can't, I can't remember his name. But that one's kind of cool there on the uh, right, and even one on the left. Not too bad. Pretty cool sword. Inconsistent drawing of the sword, though. I mean, everybody's had a different take on this sword. You figured they would have a design and said, this is the sword you guys all got to draw. But whatever. Uh, one more, I think, Zenoscope is we are getting this Van Helsing bonded by blood. We've seen these Van Again, why are they all number ones? Did they just do one shots? Anybody read these? Please tell me why they're all number ones. But with that, multiple covers. You got this one. Jump right at you. Uh, yeah, some cool ones, I guess. Ivan Tao was doing that that one in the middle. Um, I don't know. If you're interested, you go for it. Also, this next bit may be uh, more selective for not everybody because it's not. I don't know exactly what to what categorize this is because I guess it's going to be comics. I ordered it to see what this is going to be. So, Penthouse Comics is returning 2024 a lot of cool covers and uh we'll see what's inside because again i don't know but i did order pre-order this so should be getting this eventually uh and i got a couple of these because again it's kind of curious again there's a lot of covers uh the a's not bad there's a decal there's a josh sway there's a lot of options here for you uh, i'm just going to run through them i don't even know what letters to which one's which there's whole pile of covers and there's even store exclusives mixed in out there uh but here's a few more and i don't know there's even 100 percent ai art covers like this one is straight up ai which i know a lot of people like and not a lot of people don't like it but i believe that one in the middle is all ai and then the two bookending it are actually uh gonna be black bagged or whatever you know you can see that they're covered because they're not suitable for work covers i don't have the undercover images to share with you but i'm sure they are uh, titillating so if you're interested go grab them see what's inside uh and there's also a uh photo cover as well as incentives as well so one in ten one in 25 and then the photo cover in the middle again that's a lot of covers a lot of covers covered there, but I'm going to check it out. I'll tell you what's inside after I see it for myself. Uh, I know we usually do Dynamite earlier than this, but I felt like wrapping up with Dynamite this week for the Cheesecake cover. So we got Jennifer Blood, Battle Diary, uh, Linzer. Pretty cool there. There's also a, uh, I think it's a Lyrics Lee uh, on this one. Also, not bad. Yeah, I think there is Lyrics Lee. Vampirella as well has a milestone 666 edition, number 666. So Perillo, pretty cool. I like the head just laying there in the front. Uh, Carla Cohen and uh, Felipe Masafara is doing one. And then there's also one in 10 that ain't bad. Usually the one in 10s aren't new art, but this case, this is a new piece of art on this one in 10, which is I'm sure why I'm showing it. Because out of all the covers I showed you already, there are different versions that are different incentives for virgin and black and white, etc. Because it's dynamite and they can't give us enough covers. Sweeties, Candy Vigilante. All right, she's throwing a mad ball at us. I don't know. I don't know what this title is about either. But some of the covers are cheesecake. So they're suggestive. Again, Ivan Tao there in the middle. A little bit of a more of a cartoony Bruce Timmish uh, vibe there on the left. And then, yeah, there's the fourth option if you're into that red sonia's also got a couple of covers they're not all cheesecake though 
but the closest would be the Cho, I guess. Cho does a lot of cheesecake covers, so we, we do have the Cho in here, as well as, uh, I don't remember the artist on this one, but this is the C cover. And the reason why I ended with Savage Red Sonia is because, again, it's not all just about the uh, cheesecake cover. It is a lot of the times, but not always. So this is going to piggyback me into the regular cover section, which these are just covers that I like and I think are just solid. And the first one is a Red Sonia cover that's not suggestive. This is just a solid cover. I just like this. Dan Panosian, talked about him before. He is underrated, in my opinion. I'm a fan. I dig his art. I dig his style. Uh, and I like this. Like I said, I think this is a really cool cover. So nothing to do with uh, Sonya hanging out there or anything like that. It's just pretty cool. I don't know. Granted, dude, the back looks like uh, Igor from uh, Young Frankenstein. But I actually kind of like that. I think it's kind of funny. Abby normal. With that, we'll move on to our next cover. I just like this. Bloodborne. I think this is a wraparound. Looks pretty pretty solid, pretty detailed. Kind of dig this. Uh, but I like that kind of style. Like as you saw with the Panosian, similar way. There's like a lot, a lot of line work, a lot of detail, a lot of uh, texture, like feel when you look at the art. Uh, so I like this Bloodborne, uh, the Bleak Dominion uh, cover. Again, I think it's a wraparound. And this next cover is a Jeremy Bastian. I've talked about him before. His work is also in that same vein. It's very, very finely detailed. And it, I don't know how he does it. it, it I've seen him a couple times at cons and talked to him. And uh, he works basically on the size of the books as they are. So, yeah, he's working that tiny, like with some of these little marks. Uh, but it's still pretty cool. This is uh, Faceless and the Family number four. Uh, this is an Oni Press book. There have been some interesting covers here and there throughout this series. I don't know what it's about, but this one, again, since it's a bastion, it caught my eye. So I put it in my cover pile here, along with this uh, Aja. So Spidey, almost negative space Spidey, uh, fighting Shang-Chi. Kind of dig it. I've liked the whole run of these. This is issue three. So the other two issues, I like those as well. Plus, I like reading Deadly Hands of Kung Fu and the Shang-Chi stuff. So I usually get it just to read, but I've also really liked these uh, David Asha covers. So I put them here. Along with, uh, we've got a Rebels anniversary cover for on Vader. So you got Ezra riding on Chopper. Kind of cool. It just kind of caught my eye. So nothing super special about it. Don't want to put it in a whole separate section of variant covers because there's only the one this week. So I just liked it. Just like for whatever reason. I like this, this amazing Spider-Man cover. Thwip. I don't know. It reminds me of like an older vibe, older time. Uh, I know a lot of the cover is empty with the white and it's just the Thwip, but I don't know. I don't like it. So put it in here. Just like uh, this, I think it's a Marcos Martin, Superior Spider-Man number four. I like how the trade dress is the... Not mirror, but, you know, it's Spidey overlaid on Doc Ock, and it's through the trade dress. I don't know. I just like, I think it's a clever, clever layout, and I kind of dig it. So this one's in here. And as you guys know, I am a fan of David Nakayama, so I like this Nakayama. Spider-Gwen Smash number three. She's fighting a Hulk. Fuzzy Hulk. Variant Hulk. You know, I don't know. Just solid Nakayama. So put it in here. We'll see this book again later, once we get to the incentives. But for now, we're going to move on to the later prints, which I know is coming a bit later in the show than normal. Nothing really crazy going on here, so there's no 1 in 25 incentive incentives yet for me to yell and rail against. But we are getting the second print for Ultimate Spider-Man number 1. Now, we already know we're getting a third printing, and that third printing is getting an incentive. But the second print is coming here, only a couple weeks from issue one. So if you don't want to pay all those crazy prices or don't believe, don't want to buy in on the Ultimate Universe, etc., because you think it's silly, it's a, there's, no, there's no value there, whatever, fine. Then just grab yourself a second print to read it. I encourage you to read it because it actually is a solid read. I like this story. This issue one was pretty good. It's got me excited for what's coming forward in this universe as a whole but particularly spider-man and again as a spider-man reader the regular spider-man titles have left a lot to be desired over the years yes this is an alternate universe spider-man at this point but it's a spider-man story at its heart and it's interesting so 
Again, don't go paying crazy prices for things just to read something. Get yourself the cover price version right here because I doubt this will go up in price. I mean, maybe it will, but I doubt this will go up in value as a second print because, again, there's already a third print announced. There's already one in 25 of that, etc. People will probably end up chasing that. Just want to read something. Get this to read. Get this to read it. It's worth it to read. Uh, <clears throat> moving on, we're also getting a second print on the Moon Knight number one. So if you missed out, I don't know how you did. They printed a ton of them with a ton of covers. But in case you did, to go with issue two that came out earlier in the buzz section, get your second print of issue one so you can catch up on the read. Because again, this was again another solid read. There's a lot of good stories actually being written right now that actually have my attention, which is it's different than it's been in the last few years. Last few years, just been looking at covers because what was inside was just who cares. But now there's some solid stories coming on. There, there's some solid storytelling happening here. Again, who would have thought there's stories inside these things? Uh, if you're interested, there is Fall of the House X number one, also getting a second printing again with issue two. So if you need to catch up, you didn't get issue one, here's your opportunity. Same cover as uh, one of the covers released before, so nothing really new there. Uh, I don't know how you would have missed this one, or if you even care, but Rebel Moon is also giving us an issue uh, one second printing. Okay, I still haven't watched this movie. I, I heard it's not that good, so I haven't rushed to get to it. So, yeah, we'll get to it eventually. Uh, but Boom and this Under Heist, I kind of missed this one too. Uh, and it's Latham, so I should probably check this out. But there's a second printing. I don't I don't even remember when the first print came out, but a second printing of Underheist is coming out. Like I said, David Lapham, he does good crime stuff. I might have to check this out just to see what this is. So the second print might be my opportunity to do so, because, again, I don't know when the first print came out or if it's available anywhere. So, And uh, with that, I noticed on one more indie book had a second print. And I don't even know what this book is, this Ice Canyon Monster. But, yeah, Ice Canyon Monster whatever and that'll take us to our final section final segment which are the incentives aren't a ton for this week we've already covered a few through the other segments but the leftover incentives to you know take a look at are this chinatown homage i should have put the chinatown movie poster in there but if you guys should know china we forget our jackets chinatown nicholson great movie uh but rick and morty mr me seeks uh number four one in ten incentive. Uh, nothing really going on as far as pricing, but I don't see any listed or available or sold. So who knows what the market might be on this? And who knows how many places are actually going to order 10 copies even of this series because it's Mr. E Seeks PI number four. But I like it. I think it's kind of cool. Um, Miles Morales again, uh, issue 16. There's a one in 25 with this hobgoblin cover. It, uh, surprisingly i mean it's a pretty cool cover uh and i like it kind of catches your eye it's already doing a little bit not a ton not a ton but yes a copy did sell for only 12 bucks but then some of the other pre-sales close to 40 45 like, okay well those are pre-sales and then you look at what's asking well the asking prices are 40 to 45 so we'll see is that really the market for this or is it just wishy-washy We'll see what happens throwing some, you know, throwing some lines out there fishing for prices. I don't know. I honestly don't know because, again, I haven't been keeping up on this title, so I don't know what the buzz might be on the story inside. If you know and you want to share, please do so down in the comments because, again, I can only read so much. And I do try to take your guys' suggestions and check out some of the newer stuff. But still, I got a limited amount of time. I keep doing all these shows. I got to produce content. Don't have enough downtime to read everything as much as I'd like to. And as much as I'd like to not read some of the stuff that I actually do read, too. But with that all said, my problems aside, Miles Morales 16 uh, could be one to watch just to see what happens with this Hobgoblin cover. Uh, Pablo Villalobos is giving us a Blade uh, cover. It's all right. I don't know how to put this one. It's okay. It's all right. I don't love it. I don't hate it. Looks like he's doing the Gangnam style dance on the front. But yeah. Guess it's all right. I don't know. I'm a little undecided on this one. But with that said, the market 
has decided that they're willing to pay a little bit more. Yeah, there's one sale that was 20 and then an early pre-sale too that was almost 40 bucks. Asking prices, again, are more in the $45 to $50 range, though. I don't know if it's just based off of the name recognition of uh, the Lobos these days, because uh, his incentives have been doing well the last year or so. He's kind of has a Hughes vibe to him, a little bit of a Hughes quality, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens with this one. And then our last book is probably the book to watch for this week, because as far as pre-sales and things go, this seems to be on a slower week. The book that's... Uh, Got a lot of attention, and that is this Spider Gwen Smash one in twenty five. I don't know if it's just because of Dazzler and just all still with the Taylor Swift stuff. I don't know if it's all that. I don't know if it's the bright colors. I don't know if it's just because of that. I don't know if it's because of the Japanese artists that have been doing a lot of these covers, like uh, Okazaki. People have been loving uh, those covers. So this is a uh, Yagawa, I think, uh, on this particular one. But uh, this one already pre selling pretty well, uh, forty five to fifty bucks. For this Ricky, yeah, Ricky Yagawa cover. It's pretty cool. I kind of like it. The colors pop. It's bright. It, it's vibrant. Uh, but yeah, it's already pre-sold just the last couple of days, too. I mean, a week or so ago. Uh, 45 to 50 bucks. And then there's none on the market right now. And then you look even some online stores like Midtown sold out. So good luck. Good luck. This might be the one to watch this week. This could be... Uh, the book that people kind of gravitated towards based off of what I've seen so far. But again, it's only Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday. Speaking of which, the game is about to kick off. So I'm going to kick off and go get this edited and out for members to watch tonight. And then everybody else can watch this on Monday. And with that said, thank you for all your support. Thank you for stopping by and checking this out. Hopefully you're still enjoying this series as well as everything else here on the channel. And uh, I'll be back soon with some more content. All right. Later.